Hello scumbags, it's me, it's Andrew Fantasia, and welcome to this Unleashed that, frankly, I gotta apologize it's taken me so long to make this, but here it is, it's Unleashed, it's here, and we're gonna talk about something very near and dear to my heart, which is why James and Brock asked me to do this one, because they know it's something I could yap on about for hours. Don't worry, I'll keep this under an hour. Maybe. What are we talking about today? Well, we're gonna talk about... A man. In particular, this man. Now that we've swallowed the lump in our throats, that was 2018, and we've moved on into 2019, we are less than a year away from Star Wars Episode Nine. We are living in the year in which Star Wars Episode Nine will come out. It's it's on its way. It'll be here before we know it. And Episode Nine speculation is through the roof. Of course, we did a whole bunch of stuff on our channel about it. We had our predictions. Every episode of the show, we bring it up, etc., etc. There's always news. Well, here's the thing regarding Episode Nine that I want to know. Is Palpatine going to show up? Now, I know a lot of people have considered this. And a lot of you folks watching at home, you've considered this, you've asked about this, you've theorized, could he show up? Could he be uh, involved somehow? Could we get a flashback? We we really don't know yet, but what I want to do in this Unleashed is talk about just how possible it is that we'll see this gorgeous face again come December 20th, or December 19th if you get like a little early screening, in which case you're lucky. You're lucky, kid. I like you a lot. The big thing that we all go back to, particularly me, because this piece of news always gets my heart aflutter, is the whole thing regarding what J.J. Abrams said. And what he said was, and I'm going to paraphrase here because I don't remember the exact quote, but he said that episode 9 is going to tie up not just this trilogy, not just the Ray Finn, Poe, Kylo trilogy, but it's going to tie up all three trilogies. From Phantom Menace all the way up to Episode 9, whatever it may be called. It's all going to be tied up in a neat little package because this is, in fact, the final chapter of the Skywalker Saga, according to Mr. Abrams. Well, if that is the case, and I kind of hope it is because it'd be nice to put a little bow on everything, but if that is the case, that to me strengthens the theory that Mr. Sheev Palpatine will show up in some way, shape, or form because Mr. Sheev Palpatine was kind of important to the general goings-on of the galaxy. Sure, you could make a trilogy of movies set in the Roman Empire after the death of Julius Caesar, but a lot of people walking around inside that movie are going to be name-dropping Julius Caesar and saying things like, wow, remember when Caesar did this? Remember when he built that? So that's sort of where we are right now. We're living in a galaxy that's only... 30 some odd years removed from the death of the most tyrannical leader it's ever seen. We're living in a galaxy where that leader's remnants and that leader's beliefs are still trickling down into this massive fanatical group known as the First Order. And we're living in a galaxy where Jedi and the Force are still sort of coming to terms with what the next step in their evolution may be. And because the whole Jedi-Sith dynamic was such a big important part of that step, it stands to reason that their interactions with the Sith in the past are going to come to light before the Jedi can move on. It's kind of like an addiction. If you battle an alcohol addiction and be like, I want to move on and not be an alcoholic anymore, first you got to look back and be like, okay, I accept the fact that I had a problem once and I did this and I did that. That's what the Jedi have to do. They have to get to the, a point that by the end of this movie where they say, okay, look, I'm going to look back and I, I did this and I said some things I shouldn't have and I put pressure on the Chosen One when I shouldn't have and I fought some Sith, including this Emperor guy. You know, it's got to come to the limelight. You can't just start Episode Nine and finish Episode Nine without having any mention of Chief Palpatine whatsoever because I think that does a disservice to the character. If these three trilogies are all truly going to be wrapped up by the time the credits roll on Episode Nine, well, that tells me that... The problems of the galaxy as a whole, not just Resistance versus First Order, because that's, you know, a smaller chunk of the whole problem. I'm talking about the problems of the galaxy that we have, you know, that have been present since before the first shot of Episode 1. All of that needs to come to some kind of stopping point, however small it may be, however little it may be addressed. If J.J. wants to make good on his promise, then 
there are aspects of just galactic life that need to come to a close. And when you're the main villain for six movies, that's not something to sneeze at. That's not something you can just be like, okay, well, we'll, we'll toss him down this shaft and that's it. We never have to speak of him again. Nah, there's, there's something important to that. They've made it pretty clear that Kylo Ren is neither Jedi nor Sith. He's just sort of a powerful Force user who wants to take over the galaxy because it's fun. That's fine. But Kylo Ren is also enamored with the legacy of his grandfather and not the Anakin Skywalker legacy. He's specifically enamored with the legacy of Darth Vader. Now that's a red flag, because as far as we know, Kylo Ren is not a time traveler and mind reader. He can't go back to, you know, a, a moment within Empire Strikes Back and read his grandfather's mind and be like, hey, you're planning on taking over the galaxy yourself and overthrowing Palpatine. That sounds like something I should strive for too. Thanks, Grandpa. No, he is just looking at Vader from a historical standpoint. He's looking at Vader the way we would look at our grandfather after, you know, shuffling through pictures of him. And what he saw was a Sith Lord who dominated the galaxy with an iron fist. But who still had to answer to somebody else. Kylo Ren, make no mistake, Kylo Ren was 100% aware of just how powerful Emperor Palpatine was. And he was 100% aware of how Vader, Vader, the guy who took down armies with his bare hands and couldn't be scratched. I mean, if you read those comics, he can't scratch the dude. It's impossible. Even he had to bow before this even more powerful being. Kylo Ren is not stupid. He's aware of that. And now, all of a sudden, Kylo Ren has found himself in the position his grandfather never did. In charge of everything. At the top of the food chain. We spent The Force Awakens and Last Jedi with Kylo being sort of a parallel to Vader. But now that Snoke is gone... And now that the First Order is 100% in Kylo's grasp, he's not a parallel to Vader anymore. He's a parallel to the Emperor. And when that happens, suddenly we have to start making entirely new comparisons. Suddenly we can't be like, oh, he's the new Vader because of this, that, and that. No, now we have to be like, okay, he's the new Emperor because of this, that, and this. And Kylo, the character Kylo, is aware of this too. Kylo knows that some bad stuff went down in the galaxy with this Palpatine dude. And he understands the impact that it left on all these people. The point I'm trying to make here is that Kylo is going to spend all of this movie, the entirety of Episode 9, unless he dies, being the new Emperor. Not the new Vader, the new Emperor. In new canon... Legends, sure, but in new canon, we have yet to see any sort of point of view story regarding Chief Palpatine before he became a Sith Lord. We've yet to see him, you know, dealing with Plagueis, dealing with rising to power and, and coming up with this master plan that he sets in motion in Episode 1. We haven't seen any of that. Now we're getting that point of view, kind of, via Kylo. We're getting the story of a guy who had ambition, who was underneath somebody more powerful and then all of a sudden usurped the throne and now he's at the top. So we are seeing, in essence, a Palpatine origin story through Kylo. That tells me two things. That tells me, one, we don't really need a Palpatine origin story. As much as some people say they want it, and I wouldn't say no to it either, but we don't really need it because we're getting sort of the same story just told with different verses. But the second thing it tells me is that now Kylo Ren is no longer going to be staring at Vader's helmet and saying, I'm going to be like you. Now he's going to be staring at Palpatine's bedpan or what have you and saying, now I'm going to be like you. And I'm going to finish what you started, sir. I hardly knew ye. Now there's been a lot of talk and speculation regarding Matt Smith, who to me will forever be the 11th Doctor. Uh, but Matt Smith is... In this movie, somewhere, we don't know who he's playing, we don't know how big his role is, but a lot of people have speculated, you know, he's a, a really good British actor and he can play creepy and he's got sort of the physique for it. What if he's playing young Palpatine? Now here's what I have to say about that. Disney's Star Wars movies have so far been very, very good at understanding a basic principle. And that basic principle is... If you've got an opportunity for some fan service, 
take advantage of it. I love Matt Smith. He's Every time I find out he's in something, I get excited. I love the idea of Matt Smith playing some kind of Sith Lord or something. Busting out a red lightsaber, yeah, sure. But I'd like to think that not just Disney, not just Kathleen, but J.J. Abrams, a guy who grew up with the original trilogy, who's all about hearkening back to the past and all that stuff, I like to think that all those powers combined would look at Matt Smith and say, okay, yeah, you know, he's great and whatever, but you know what? Don't forget, we still have access to this man. Ian McDermott is getting old, but he's still kicking. He's still around. God knows he's not busy, as far as I know. The man is like a low-hanging fruit. He's ripe for the plucking. He's there. He's the right age. You know, he, he, he can still play a withered old emperor. You know, they don't need him to be jumping around and stuff. That is that fan service, baby. That's exactly what that is. Sure, Matt Smith as a young Palpatine would be kind of cool. I'm not going to argue against that. However, if I have Ian McDermott and Matt Smith both saying to me, Andrew, I would love to be Palpatine in your Star Wars movie. I'm sorry, Matt Smith. I love you, but I'm putting all my chips on Ian McDermott because I know that all those people out there who grew up watching the prequels and all those people out there who grew up watching The Return of the Jedi who know this man, who know his voice, his mannerisms, the way he stands, his eyes, his smile. Nobody can smile like Ian McDermott as Palpatine, okay? Nobody. All those people who grew up with that will be absolutely overcome with joy to see that man appear on the big screen as Palpatine one more time. He's there. He's still alive. He's still acting, as far as I know. Matt Smith is great, but Matt Smith isn't going anywhere anytime soon. Ian McDermott, the clock's starting to tick. So if you have the opportunity to tie up all the loose ends in 9 and use the original Emperor to do so, yeah, you're going to take that opportunity, folks. I'm sorry, but th that is the right answer. That is the right answer. We don't know what this script is going to be. We have no idea. But with all the characters we've come to meet so far, with Rey and her Jedi training and, and Finn and Rose and BB-8 and Poe Dameron and Cadel Coconix and Kylo Ren and whatever the hell this guy's name was again, plus now with the addition of Naomi Aki and Mariadoc Brandybuck and Doctor Who and Lando and Clifford from Spice World and Felicity, they're all joining the fun too. This is going to be such a packed movie. Is there room for an Emperor Palpatine cameo? It doesn't sound like there is, but I like to trust that the folks over there working on the film knew what they were doing and that they understood, yeah, it's great, let's have all these new characters and whatnot, but we have the opportunity to show the Emperor one more time, to show this fan-favorite character who really is the cause for all this, the catalyst for everything. Why would we not take that opportunity? So, never tell me the odds. If I'm putting down my chips, we're sitting at a, a table in Vegas and I gotta put down money, is Emperor Palpatine, Ian McDermott, Emperor Palpatine, showing up in Episode Nine? My answer is yes, because I think, and yeah, sure, this might sound just like crazy bias because you all know how much I love him, but I think it would be a wasted opportunity not to have him in it. If I end up being wrong, I'm not going to be like, this movie sucks, I'm disappointed now. I'm going to be disappointed, but you know what? I'll understand, I'll live, I'll get over it, but I'm pretty sure I won't be wrong. I'm pretty sure we're going to see that wonderful, withered old face one more time before the Skywalker saga finally comes to a close. You can't talk about Rome after Julius Caesar's death without one last nod to the man himself. Anyway, what do you guys think? Do you think I am a crazy, handsome fool and that Palpatine is not showing up anywhere in this movie? Or do you think that I am a correct, handsome fool and that he will, in fact, be showing up? Please let me know what you think. Chime in in those comments, homies. We love to hear from you. We love when you give us feedback. We love when you watch... It's all part of the fun of being a Star Wars fan. I'm Andrew Fantasia. Thanks so much for watching this episode of Unleashed. And until next time, my friends, may the force of others be with you. Hey, scumbags. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up on our video. 
As always, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, Rebel Scum Podcast, for all the latest videos.